if I had to have one piece of equipment and just nothing else. The best benefit about being able to work out at home, I don't have to wear any funny shoes. So we're in front of my garage. I'm gonna give you a little garage gym tour, kind of MTV crib style. Kind of cheesy, I know, but a lot of people have asked. So this is what I have focused on ever since March 2020 when we all know what happened, right? I don't wanna have to be dependent on a gym anymore. My career is dependent on me staying in shape in a lot of ways. So let's take a spin. First things first, the reason I wanna work out barefoot is because we spend way too much time in shoes. So I know this is funny to talk about, but if you're working out at home, take some advice from someone who has had countless injuries. Working out barefoot makes a big difference. Just do not drop something on your toe. Okay, Being able to actually create a natural bridge with your arch, being able to actually feel your body makes all the difference in the world. Okay, I can't do that at a regular gym because, well, obvious reasons. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the basic stuff. This isn't designed to be like everything that you would get in your gym. People just ask, what do I have in my gym and why? And that way, if you ever wanted to be able to build out a great gym, you could. And you know, full disclaimer, with what I do, I do get a lot of support from brands. So I have the ability to be able to get some pretty cool products. So now I'm not saying that to flaunt it, I'm saying that to be realistic. Okay, now I always wanted one of these. And this is mainly used for my wife, but it is my primary means for warming up. And the reason that I will tell you, the reason I like to use a stair climber, whether you're in a gym or you're at home, is simply put, when it comes down to muscle activation, there's no better way to really get yourself into that full hip extension without actually going into a stretch than using a stair climber, right? So I can like step up, and when I step up, I'm actually able to engage my glute, and I'm able to really open up that hip flexor. So I usually use 10 minutes or so on that. I'll use it for a good workout too, just low impact, okay? Nothing really crazy there. This second machine here, this is called a, this one isn't a woodway, this is called a uh, sprint runner, which is very similar to a woodway treadmill. But the curve effect is what I use simply because, well, let me show you. When you're running, put my phone up over here. I have a tendency to heel strike, okay? So if I were to break into a run on this thing, it forces me to run on the balls of my feet and push off. So rather than heel striking, where I would normally say, land on my heel and roll just because of, I don't know, weaker hamstrings, which I do have, uh, this allows me to push off the ball of my foot. The other thing that's cool about it, I can adjust the resistance. So if I wanted to make it more resistant, I could do sled pushes, still pushing off the balls of my feet. Okay, I'll show you some other things that I do. Uh, using medicine balls, things like that. We're just kind of going on down the line. Battle ropes. In my opinion, a garage gym must have. Battle ropes are cheap. They're easy to use. You can do a multitude of different things with them. Uh, you can get a pair or a set of battle ropes realistically for as little as 30 or 40 bucks. And I know I'm going to do another video that breaks down uh, essentials. What I think that people should get under a certain budget um, and, and definitely can have battle ropes on there. By the way, if you haven't already, please do hit that red subscribe button. We're normally a nutrition channel, but I do work out, so I might as well showcase that a little bit. So that red subscribe button is going to bring you all that content and then also hit that little bell icon, turn on notifications. And then after this video, check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So when it comes down to getting my grass-fed, grass-finished meat and all my meat, it gets delivered to my doorstep via butcher box. So super high quality stuff. Largely, you're gonna find that it's less expensive than equal quality meat at the grocery store. So go ahead, check them out down below in the description. They're a big supporter of this channel, so thank you butcher box, but don't forget to check them out. All right, you know what? Let's come back to this stuff, because there's a lot here. I know it's a small area, but this is a perfect demonstration of how you can get by with just very minimal space, but with a lot of equipment. So let's move over to this torque rack here. Okay, Torque's a cool company. This isn't a plug for them, okay, but this is a cool product that's by them. So if you're looking for rigs, okay, like one kind of focal point big piece of your gym, I would recommend going with a company like Torque instead of Rogue. Now I know that's a lot to say. Uh, I do have some Rogue equipment, but the Rogue racks are largely more expensive than the Torque racks. 
and I like the customization that you can do with a torque rack. So let me show you what we got here. So this rack, I've got what this is called a, is a landmine attachment. Basically what you do is you put a barbell in here and it allows you to do all kinds of you know, shoulder presses, all kinds of uh, thrusting movements like this, all using what's called the landmine. So very, very good if you need to do, uh, for example, pitchers. When I was training back in the day, I would work with pitchers and a lot of times they wouldn't want them to do overhead presses because of the instability on the rotator cuff and the risk. But being able to do a landmine press would allow them to gain strength in the delt without having to harm that rotator cuff. So it's great for just isolating the shoulder and really rehabbing injuries. Uh, neat thing is get all these different attachments. You know, these are like uh, dip attachments right here. So I can just hop on here, crank out my dips. Uh, I got these guys because where I live, I've got some really cool ability to go do some epic rock climbing, which I used to do a lot of when I was in high school, and I would love to get back into it when I get a little bit more time. Uh, so it's kind of neat. I can practice my grip stuff, you know, crank out my pull-ups in a different way. Um, this wide bar, or this, excuse me, these wide balls here are giant. It's so difficult to get a grip on them. Anyway, if you ever had to work out just a few things, your show muscles, calves, arms, <laughs> forearms, those things are going to build your forearms like crazy. Then one thing that's very, very, very overlooked, people will oftentimes get a pull-up bar, but they won't pay attention to this, okay? Getting one that has a V-bar. Why is that so important? Well, let me tell you right now, as someone that spends a lot of time still in front of the computer or a lot of time looking down at my phone, the weight of your head ends up increasing exponentially at the rate that it comes down. So if you're head tilting your head down, the amount of force on your neck is significant. Having this inside grip is great just for being able to every once in a while come out in the middle of the day, do some pull-ups, do that hold, and help counteract that. That is exactly why I got that. I have changed my pull-ups from being more lat focused, where I always try to do wide grip, to a lot more narrow grip to try to help out that posture, that little bit of kyphosis that I have. Okay. Uh, I've got a mix of bumper plates, mix of Olympic plates, all just kind of a mix mash. This is a heavy box. So the cool thing is if you're shopping for a heavy box or a, a box like for plyos and stuff, and you're getting a soft box, you can usually find them lightweight and heavy. Um, the lightweight ones are super light. So they're good for step ups and stuff like that. But the moment you jump on them, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna fall. This thing's heavy. This thing's like 100 pounds. Actually, not that. It's like 60 pounds, maybe. So it stays put. It doesn't move. So I can jump on it. I can do things like that and not ever really have an issue. Um, then we move along. You probably have recognized this. This is half of my squat rack that was, or half of my dumbbell rack that was at the studio. But I left half at the studio and brought half home. So what I did here is I only have dumbbells every 10 pounds, which seems to pose a little bit of a problem because you'd be surprised how often you need that five pound increment. But um, you know, if you're trying to save space, those Bowflex little kind of, uh, I don't even know what they're called, but the ones where you select the weight, those work too. Believe it or not, this is great, but it's a little bit of a waste of space, I will say. Um, I probably would have put like a cable machine if I could have afford one or put one in here, right? But it's just, um, this was convenient. I find that I do much less with dumbbells now than I used to. I do a lot more kettlebell, a lot more trap bar, which we'll talk about in a second. This bench, simple bench, I don't quite like it to be completely honest because this shape is just weird. Anyway, okay, this is going to be on my must haves video. This is a $70 trap bar and that even still is a little on the higher price for just this basic welded one. You can find them on Amazon cheap, okay? But word to the wise, when you get a trap bar or a hex bar, don't get the one that you bolt together. And if you've gotten them on Amazon, then you know the ones I'm talking about. They bolt together, they're kind of at the, uh, like, they make it easy for shipping. But A, you're gonna pinch your fingers. B, I don't like being dependent on a bolt <laughs> when I'm lifting this. So hex bars are great. Because for someone like me, who again has kyphosis where my, my kind of spine tilts a little bit, uh, and also don't, I don't like to load my spine, okay? I have a messed up disc in L2, so I don't like loading my spine if I don't have to. So trap bars are awesome because it allows me to be able to just get into a traditional kind of squat deadlift, but actually be able to really focus on not loading my spine, you know, and messing around with the actual motion 
that I need to really play with, which is that proper hip hinge. So anyhow, I leave this loaded with 135 all the time because I don't really go heavy with it anymore. Not really much of a need. Okay, now moving in to the Echo Bike. This is probably, I would say, the piece of equipment that I splurged the most on, relatively speaking. Now, some of these are more expensive pieces than this one, but this one, given that it has the, the Rogue name on it, it was relatively expensive, but I did have a gift card. So um, the reason that I like this is fan resistance is always my go-to because it's, it's a little bit more real. Uh, any kind of other resistance, belt or electric resistance, doesn't feel real. You're not getting the same resistance versus pressure that you're putting into it. If I put more pressure with something that's fan resistance like that, I'm going to push harder. If I push lighter, it's going to be lighter. So the big thing that I like about this is I don't have to, I don't have to be just using arms and legs. If I wanted to, I can go ahead and pop my feet up and I can warm up my upper body and just hit that, okay? All of this stuff is all about me getting loose, to be completely honest, okay? When you sat at 300 pounds before, then your body has some injuries. The other thing is, I don't need to use the, you know, these either. So it kind of serves a dual purpose or a triple purpose. I would recommend getting one of those if space will allow. If budget allows, uh, there's different brands like Assault Bike that are quite a bit cheaper. Uh, you can find them all the time. They're everywhere now. They're a lot more popular. You can get them for a couple hundred bucks. You can find them used. I saw one on Craigslist not that long ago. It was like 120 bucks. Probably not as stable as the Rogue Echo Bike. This is more of a commercial one, but still. Okay, so this, this is a Concept2 skier or skier G, however you want to say it. Uh, this was the first piece of equipment that I got because I knew that if I could not get my hands on other equipment, what could I use outside of running that would get my heart rate the way that I want it and get me a full body experience? Uh, when I was doing a lot of rehab on my back, when I was doing a lot of rehab on my hips, this was the go-to. Now, the reason that I like the skier is it's massive upper body involvement. And there was a study that was published in the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy that I've talked about in a few videos, shows that when you utilize upper body uh, activity, when you use the upper body, when you're doing HIT, you end up getting your heart rate up a lot higher, okay, because you have less overall resistance against, actually, excuse me, more resistance against like the capillaries, against the blood vessels, so your heart has to work harder. Okay, you have more dilation in your legs, so it's easier to get blood flow to your legs, so your heart doesn't have to work as hard. Okay, the upper body is a lot harder to get energy to, uh, especially when you're going at like high intensity interval training. So to get the heart rate up, to get those calories burned, you get that upper body involved. But the nice thing about the skier is, again, I can just show you really quick, it on just a nice easy resistance. The way you're really supposed to do it is going into full triple extension. So you come down and then come up onto your toes. So again, I get that proper alignment of my back. It's just something that's great. I mean, you throw 30 seconds of that in the mix and it's perfect. And if anyone wants to see like a style of workout or anything in the garage gym, just let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, then I've got something that I've been turned on to a lot more recently, which is doing more heavy bag type stuff. Um, so that's called a rec bag. That sucker is 70 pounds. This one's 100 pounds. It looks simple. Nice thing about these rec bags versus typical sandbags is they're filled with chopped tires. So they're not going to leak out all over the place. If you use sandbags, you're going to find that sand ends up everywhere. Okay, now at least with the rubber ones, I can throw it, I can slam it, I can do whatever. You know, I need to do something like this and do some off-balance squats, you know, slam it, whatever. Any kind of functional training that actually makes sense. Same thing with the 100 pound. It's amazing what 30 pounds difference makes. <laughs> that sucker is a lot harder to work with. All right. These, some cheap knockoff TRX. I just didn't feel like spending $200 on TRX when I could get these for like 45 on Amazon. I think these are... I don't know, class, <laughs> whatever that means. Downside with these is they don't have that patented design that TRX has. TRX has a patented design where it can just have one hoop or one loop, and then you can kind of adjust them on side to side. This has changed a lot of my training style. I was never a big suspension trainer. Um, when I look at military models and things like that, they do a lot of TRX. When I work with any first responders, law enforcement, military, this is always a big part of their routines. So I learned it, but I was never a big fan of it just because, I don't know, I was always kind of a meathead mentality. 
But this has changed a lot of things, especially when it comes to rehab. One of my favorite moves is literally just this, okay? Opening up, just like that. You can see why I like that. It's all rear delt. It gets my upper back aligned for my favorite warm-up moves. Highly recommend this for core. Highly recommend it for just simple, inexpensive way to get a garage gym built, okay? So you're kind of picking what I would really ideally get. I would get some of these. I would get a trap bar. I would get a simple rack. I would get some of these heavy bags. Really simple. These guys, they may look like just simple bands, and they are but be amazed at what a little additional resistance does. So these bands, the whole idea is to help you just develop that control of specific muscles. So just to give you an example, if I'm doing a row, I might put my arm or hands in the loops there and I might try to fight resistance and say, okay, don't let them come together. So keep the resistance out and then do my row. See how I'm not letting it come back in, keep it out. Little simple things like that. Again, $9 for however many I have here, all kinds of different resistance. And trust me, this is the kind of thing you need at home because I wouldn't do that kind of stuff in a normal gym. I mean, ego still gets in the way no matter what you are, right? You're still not going to take the time to do these little teeny moves that take five minutes because you're already going to the gym, which takes 15 minutes. You're driving home from the gym, it takes 15 minutes. You're getting your stuff together, locker room. You add an extra hour on to your normal gym. I have time to do this stuff now. This thing, a little bit pricey, but if you guys know Mark Bell, this is called a hip circle. This just goes around your knees like this. And the idea is when you're squatting or when you're doing anything like that, you're fighting the resistance. Same model as what I was doing with that, except what this does, look at my feet. This is what's cool. If I bring my knees out and fight the way I'm supposed to, I create that natural arch that I should have because I have a very flat foot, okay? And it makes it so that now I'm in the right position. Now I'm creating torque right here, okay? Helping push me, boom, out of my squat and using my calves that little bit that I normally wouldn't, okay? Let me show you what it looks like without this. And this isn't even exaggerated. Without that, if I'm not fighting that, it's still quite a bit different. When I'm fighting it, I'm more like this. So anyway, you can create more torque, get better alignment that way. It's a good little investment for 20 bucks or whatever they are. Don't need to spend a ton of time on this. These are just bands, okay? Basic bands, loop around, use them for you know, stretching, whatever. By the way, this rack is also from Torque, same company that made the squat rack. Cool thing about this rack is this one's set up for combination storage, battle rope anchor. Um, this is a band bar. So if you ever get anything from them or anything like that, this is a band bar where you can just adjust bands at different heights, have little hooks here. So if I wanted to do like a chest stretch or anything like that, again, things you don't think about. You get a bunch of bands and you're like, where do I put them? Where do I, you know? So this allows you to actually just hook them up. Okay, then let's move on. Then I got it. I went on this weird kick where I just got into just heavy random bags and heavy random balls and things like that. So I got one of these. This is just a 40 pound bag. Again, it's called a sand bell or a kettle or steel bell or something like that. It's just awkward and that's the point of it. So if you're doing core, anything like that, you know, if I'm doing uh, lunges with like twists, it's just a different feel. I can slam it. I can pick it up, I can do a kettlebell swing with it, I can hold it, it's, it's just weird, okay? That one came preloaded. Funny story, when I was on uh, Amazon looking for these things, I was like, wow, 20 bucks for a 50 pound bag, you know, or whatever. It shows up and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> so you have to be paying close attention. I'm not about to go and try to find 50 pounds worth of sand to fill this up just to have sand spill everywhere. This one is pre-filled with steel shot. Okay, so steel shot like you would put in, um, well, I can't even say it on YouTube because they'll flag the video, but steel shot is, if you know what steel shot is, you know what steel shot is. They're little teeny circular balls, uh, metal balls. So it just makes it really awkward. Um, again, really inexpensive way, just get a tremendous workout in. Probably don't need to explain a whole lot of this, but a couple different varieties of slam balls, 15 pounds, 30 pounds, 
50 pounds. Again, slam balls are the name of the game. Huge, huge fan of them. Uh, kettlebells. I don't do a ton of kettlebell stuff, but I'm getting into it more. Uh, Turkish get-ups, any kind of ab moves. So if it comes down to, again, what you would want to get, I would probably say getting a few kettlebells would be a better idea than getting dumbbells. They're more universal because if you want to do some cleans, if you want to do some presses, it's just a little bit smoother movement. Um, then some of my personal favorites down here, these guys. So this is an Atlas ball, 90 pound Atlas ball, total game changer. Not the cheapest ball, I will say. They're a little bit expensive, you gotta look around. Um, but if I had to have one piece of equipment and just nothing else, I would have one of these because I cannot believe the kinds of just workout it puts me through. Even literally just carrying it. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just pick it up and I'll just walk on that treadmill or I'll put it up on my shoulder and I'll walk with it. You know, you can do, it's 90 pounds. So it's like the kind of things you can do, pick it up, deadlift it, throw it over your back. And you know, that right there gets my heart rate up. Okay. It's crazy, you do that 10 times, it's insane. So um, then we have this bad boy. Oh, just to give you an idea, I don't know what came over me to get this, but this one is 150 pounds. <laughs> You're probably wondering what the heck do you do with that? Um, pretty much pick it up and drop it. Uh, I've seen some people do some pretty impressive things with that, but I don't think that really people are going to get a huge benefit. Um, downside was Power Systems, the company that makes this, they had a 90 pound and then the next jump up was 150. It's like, oh, I guess I'll get it and work towards it. The reality is I need like a 120. Um, anyway, the 90 pound one is just epic. So you can just pick it up, hold it and just walk with it or literally pick it up, hold it, do a couple lunges. So much core getting lit up with that. It's unreal, functional to the max. Um, these guys, this is just a simple um, vest you wear, okay? And it's plate loaded. Again, it's kind of a cool one, but any weight vest will do. So I just load a plate on there. Boom, and this just, you wear it over for weighted pull-ups, anything like that. Since I don't have a cable machine, so I can't do anything like that. Uh, very simple there. Okay, a little bit of my rehab stuff, which actually takes up quite a bit of space. These are called voodoo bands. Uh, voodoo bands are kind of a novice way to limit blood flow for a little bit, to create a little bit more of what is called a lactate response, a little bit more of like a um, BFR technique, which I'll talk a little bit about. But really more so what it's doing is if you put pressure kind of on a ligament at a joint, it's going to alleviate some of the pressure on a muscle. So if I need to warm up and get low with squats or anything like that, I might use some voodoo bands just to get going. Um, if you know what voodoo bands are, then you know already. I could spend a lot of time talking about them, but I don't want to <laughs> on this video. Um, this is called a T-spine peanut. Okay, if you have any kind of neck issues, back issues, where you have tight traps, this is a must you literally lay on it, okay? You lay on it and you rock your T-spine back and forth on it. It's called a T-spine because of your thoracic spine. T-spine, your kind of mid to upper back. Um, really good idea to get a couple of them. I usually travel with one. This size ball, a little five inch ball. Let me show you what I typically would do. One of my main warm ups that I do. This little sucker is epic just to open up just the hips a little bit. A lot of times if your lower back hurts when you're squatting, it's a result of tight adductors, which are the muscles that come on the inside of the legs. And if you just warm yourself up by loosening them up, you'll be amazed how it changes your squat and how it changes any feeling on your lower back. Um, a smaller ball doesn't work as well. I like to get a five inch ball, put it on a block. Anyway, you can do a lot more with a five inch ball than a small ball, just because of the type of sur the surface area and the kind of pressure you get. And then really quick, um, I don't really use this as much as I thought I would. This is a uh, hyper ice, this is a, but if I feel like I have time, a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm doing a heavier squat day or something like that where I'm doing front squats, I'll squat and then I'll take some time and I'll loosen up my hammies a little bit. And yeah, it just more so for blood flow than anything. Um, I didn't, again, I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Okay, now another really inexpensive investment that you might want to do, valve slides. On turf, they don't work as well. They work phenomenally well on carpet. 
So if you are limited with space and you need to maybe get some good core moves in, I'm literally going down to your knees, things like that. Tremendous ab movement. Or if you're trying to do some push-ups and you want to just get added motion, um, other things you can do, putting your feet on them, you know, doing planks, plank jacks, doing shuffles. Really simple thing to get. Uh, I want to say these were, I think these were like 20 bucks, but these are Valslide brand. You know, you can get off brand, that's a lot cheaper. And then the thing I'm going to end with, uh, BFR. Okay, I have a separate video on BFR that I released earlier this month uh, talking about why BFR works for rehab, why it works for prehab, why it works for creating that lactic acid buildup that you want, believe it or not. So we often think that lactate is a bad thing or lactic acid is a bad thing. It's actually an adaptive mechanism and it's an additional fuel for the body. And what I mean by that is when you get that burn in your legs or your burn in your arms when you're doing an activity, that's not pain from the activity. That is pain from a response that actually signals a basically something to your brain to trigger adaptation. Lactate is a byproduct of exercise, okay? And it also serves as an additional fuel and also helps with stem cell production and all kinds of things. So when you do BFR, you're putting good quality bands, not just like regular resistance bands kind of thing around your limbs. So for instance, like this. You see, these are actually good quality ones. And then you pump them up to a certain uh, level. Okay, you need to know what your rate of a, or your percentage of occlusion is. Long story short, uh, I can link down below the ones that I use and it explains a little bit better than I do. But when it comes to rehab or being able to get massive amounts of blood flow to an area without being under heavy load, these are a good investment. Okay, so again, trying to build a simple garage gym, BFRs allow you to utilize lesser weight but still get a nice good pump and get that blood volume that you need to really get the job done. Um, I could probably go into some detail on some other stuff here. I mean, I've got uh, my leaf blower <laughs> and then uh, because it gets windy sometimes, I've got my little vibrating roller. Again, all my rehab stuff. So this guy just vibrates. Uh, it's one of Tommy's favorite toys to come out and play with. And then I think that's about it. I mean, I got my jump rope, my speed rope. Mm get a lot done with this. The only thing that's missing is a 40 yard dash and you'll do some sprints, but I got a good hill outside and I think I can knock it out with that. So anyhow, this is the gym tour. Like it, love it, hate on me, bag on me, whatever. All right, as always, keep it locked and here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.